Stop 2. Civilian Life in Ibarakam, Roman Bath Pub. Standing in St. Samson's Square, you should look for the Roman Bath Pub. The civilian settlement extended between the fort and the river on the northeast bank and across onto the southwest bank of the River Ouse. Ibarakam was as cosmopolitan as the city of York is today. It was home to people from all walks of life and backgrounds. Originally a military settlement, a civilian town soon sprang up around the fortress in order to meet the economic and social needs of the garrison. It would have been a busy, crowded and smelly place to live. The Romans divided their day into sections, the length of which varied with the seasons. Most Romans rose at dawn. The first part of the day was for meeting friends and gossiping, possibly over breakfast. The second part of the day was generally for business. This is Gaia, the jeweller. She is a fictional character, but everything she says is based on evidence of Roman civilian life. I had the commander's wife in this morning. She wanted a necklace made for her with beads in the shape of a melon, like the ones being imported to Rome from Egypt. She insisted it was the latest fashion to come from Rome and said she simply had to have one. I don't really have the time for this at the minute as I have to make a set of jet bangles, a couple of coin brooches and some carved bone clothing pins for my other customers. Oh, sorry, I have to go. My son is helping me in the shop today. He's been doing it since he was six, but he is making a mess of that bone pin. After all their business had been conducted, the Romans liked to have a sleep in the Mediterranean fashion of a siesta. This was the third part of the day. But before taking that siesta, the Romans may have visited a temple to pray for prosperity or to put a curse on someone. Siestas were followed by a trip to the bathhouse. The Roman bath pub in front of you stands on the remains of one of Ibarakam's bathhouses. Everyone, no matter their social standing, went to the bathhouse. These places levelled society in the sense that everyone attended and used the same rooms and pools. However, they also reinforced the social hierarchy as some people had slaves to help them bathe. Although everyone attended, it was not considered acceptable for men and women to do so together. Many bathhouses had either two sets of identical rooms, one for men and one for women, or set aside different hours for men and women to bathe. The native British population would have initially been cautious of attending the bathhouse. However, once tried, it was often adopted as a regular habit and attending bathhouses was viewed as an effective way of Romanising native populations. This is Julia. She is a fictional character, but what she says is based on what we know about bathing practices. I'm having a relaxing time at the baths today. I need it after a hard morning cleaning the house and watching the children. I paid to have a massage with scented oils from one of the house slaves and I enjoyed it so much I am thinking of inviting all my friends here for my birthday in a couple of weeks. I heard from Olivia that the jeweller's daughter is pregnant but still isn't married. Oh, the attendant has just come round warning us that our time is almost up and the men will be arriving soon. I suggest you heed the attendant's warning and leave shortly unless you want to witness the men gambling their money away, drinking and frolicking with prostitutes and messing around in the manner of Bacchus, the god of wine. I'm going home, but maybe I'll see you here tomorrow at the same time? The last part of the day was set aside for eating dinner. The traditional Roman diet consisted largely of meat, usually beef, supplemented by olive oil, bread and other cereal products. Much of the produce was collected from the countryside around Ibarakum. However, the Romans did not have a particularly good knowledge of native British plants. For example, 
seeds from the weed corn cockle have been found mixed in with some of the grain stores. The seeds from this weed are poisonous, and if some made their way into a loaf of bread, they would have caused a bad case of stomach ache. A lot of the middle and upper class citizens would have eaten imported food that was stereotypically Roman, such as olives, grapes and figs. The majority of citizens would have gone to their local tavern for food, whilst the wealthy stayed at home to eat dinner, often accompanied by entertainment of some form, or playing board games, or listening to music and poetry. There isn't a lot of evidence of the housing in Ibarakum. However, houses in the centre of Roman cities were often not of a high quality, with people living almost in their neighbours' pockets. Unlike the regimented barracks in the fortress, the civilian settlement grew up in a disorganised fashion, and houses would have been small and roads between them narrow.